Yo guys, Zuma here, and today I'll be doing my best to break down the moves of each of the Data Organization 13 in an attempt to better help you guys understand how to deal with them and potentially win the fight. This is to be more of a general tips and tricks type of series and less of a really in-depth and detailed explanation. If you're looking for something way more detailed, I would suggest my close friend Dean's or Sir Alan One's Boss Buster series. They go way into more detail, so if that's something more your style, please check them out. They are awesome. Since KH3's data battles rely more on memorization than anything, I feel like it would be easier to show you guys how to deal with an enemy's moveset, rather than going too in-depth and possibly confusing you with my mumbling. Be sure to tell me which organization member you want to see next, and whatever is the most requested will be in the next video until we eventually cover all of them. In today's data boss breakdown, we are covering Ansem Seeker of Darkness. First things first, before we get into their moveset, you guys are going to want to know a couple of terms. I will be using the term phase to try and better help organize which moves you will see in specific parts of the fight. I will also be using the term DM, which for those who don't know, stands for desperation move, or to put it more accurately, a big super move that all the organization members have that you normally have to block until they are finished doing it. Both of these terms go hand in hand with the last term you will hear me refer back to occasionally, which is HP gate. Each of the bosses have an HP gate where they start to do different and or more attacks, i.e. entering another phase, or possibly will even start their DM, if you get their HP down past a certain point, hence the term HP gate. Finally, with all that out of the way, let's start breaking down Ansem's attacks and come up with ways to avoid and punish him accordingly. Alright, so at the beginning of the battle, you more or less can always expect the same move coming from Ansem which I will dub lasers. Keep in mind that we will be in phase 1 of the fight until otherwise stated. Because it's always the first move Ansem does, it's pretty easy to practice how to get around it. Ansem will summon 4 lasers around you as well as summon 4 dark spikes around him. In order to get past him for an opening, you will want to guard 4 times to guard the lasers, after which you will want to airstep through the dark spikes straight to Ansem and begin attacking him. You should be able to get an entire combo off without any real problems, though if you wait too long to airstep toward him, he will send out purple projectiles towards you and you may get hit while comboing, so be quick about it. The second move we will cover that Ansem can do in his first phase would be something I will just dub Desist, and it's where he creates a shield of lasers around himself. The only real thing you can do for this move would be to get up to him and guard. If you want some extra style points, you're able to guard into reprisal over and over again, but the window to do these actions is tight, so you have to be careful or you will get punished. There is no chance to open Ansem up after this move. The third move we'll cover that Ansem will do in his first phase is something I will call Embrace the Dark. If you haven't noticed, me naming these moves are literally just the things he says as he's, you know using the battle quotes, so. Moving on, in this move, Ansem summons multiple dark spikes around Sora, as well as sending a shadow underneath the floor. You are basically on a timer for both of these, but it's still easy to dodge them. You are going to want to jump as the dark claw tries to grab you, and once you do, glide shortly until you see the dark spikes hone in on you. As soon as you see them hone in, air slide out of the way and towards Ansem for an easy punish. The fourth move to cover afterwards would be his Dark Roll attack. Similar to the one he does in Kingdom Hearts 1, but slightly easier to dodge, you're going to want to guard the first two hits regularly, but he tries to delay the third one. Delay the time you normally guard to make sure you catch it in time. You are then able to air step toward him for a free combo as he is completely open after this attack. Now, at this point, he will randomly choose to do any of the four moves we have covered so far until you make him hit his first HP gain, which usually happens after you've done six bars of damage to him, after which he will start to do his first desperation move. Now let us cover the attacks he can do in his first desperation move, for which there are three. His first attack, he would have summoned two giant orbs of darkness. This is pretty simple to avoid. Just stand in place and time your guard with his attacks. He will attack with the orbs four times in a row, so just time your guard four times and air step immediately after that to punish him. His second attack only appears if you do not punish him right after his first one. The two dark orbs summon even faster dark projectiles that give status effects that can get you killed very easily. There's also the shadow he sends underground to try and grab you, but this is easily avoidable by jumping up and gliding around. Once that move is done, it leads us to the third attack of the DM, or second if you chose to punish the first attack of the desperation move. 
The third and last move of his first desperation attack is like the first attack he does in terms of how pretty simple it is to guard. Wait until the left orb shakes and then immediately guard. The orbs will attack you three full times in a sort of rhythm. After the third succession of attacks, you're going to want to dodge roll forward as soon as you can because if you don't, you will get caught by the orbs for some serious damage. If you successfully dodge roll forward though, air step to Ansem to get that last combo in and end this first desperation move. Phase 2. Congratulations, if you made it past the first DM, you are now in phase 2 of this battle. Don't relax yet though, because right after his DM, he will do a move I will title Explosion. This move is a tad trickier to guard against, so pay close attention. As he is pulling you toward him, keep dodge rolling until you see the glow of the lasers he has summoned. Then you will immediately want to guard 2 to 3 times depending if you dodge roll the first set of lasers. Continue to dodge roll until you see the lasers glow again, guard 2 or 3 times, then jump and air slide away. You can also glide, whichever you are more comfortable with. After his explosion, you will want to air step to him as soon as possible to get a quick punish on him. His next move that he only does in his second phase we will dub Light Pillars, and this is where he will send out a bunch of pillars of light and set up some dark spikes. Get away from the Light Pillars by gliding or air sliding away, then you are able to use thunder on the dark spikes then go in for a quick punish. Oh look, one of his returning moves from phase 1, lasers. It is more or less exactly the same as it is in phase 1, just guard 4 times, though this time he will end it with the pillars of light, so make sure to guard this incoming attack. I'm unsure if you can really punish this, but I believe it's better to be safe than sorry and just hold off. Now let's just call this next move lasers 2. I know, I am so creative. Much like he does at the round start of the fight, he will summon lasers with dark spikes set up, but will summon two layers of dark spikes instead of one, and much like the first version, if you are too late to air step to him after guarding it, he will send out purple projectiles. They should not hit you as you try to air step through them, just make sure you have good timing with it. The last new move in his arsenal for phase 2 outside of his second DM is something we are going to call tracking laser. What you can do is jump up, double flight, and glide to the right and attempt to guard the lasers. You can air step in for a punish, but be wary of the lasers behind you as they can still hit you. Ansem will pretty much repeat all of his phase 2 moves until you are able to get down to 2 health bars, in which he will start his second and final DM. Keep in mind that if you leave Ansem alone long enough, after only doing 7.5 bars of damage, he can jump straight into his second DM, so just make sure you are punishing him when you can. Desperation move number 2. Alright guys, home stretch. If we're able to deal with his moves here, you win the battle. Just keep following step by step and we'll get there. The first move that he will do in his second desperation move can be a doozy to dodge as it can probably overwhelm you with how fast things are coming at you. The first thing you are going to want to do is run back, jump, and start gliding to avoid the first orb's flurry of projectiles. But keep on your guard as Ansem will attempt to throw the orbs after he has finished shooting out the projectiles. For the second orb, you will want to do the same thing, or you can do what I do here and descend slowly when you think the projectiles are done being shot. Prepare to air step when you think he's going to send the second orb and punish him. Your timing has to be quick. His second move in his second DM is probably not one of my favorites as it's a little weird to dodge. You know when Ansem is about to use this one in particular when he says the line, return to darkness. Wait until the orbs are close to you, then dodge roll left and right very carefully. Do it too slowly and you'll get hit like me. The timing on the dodge rolls are pretty strict, so if you absolutely have to, you could link through it, but in order to master the fight completely, I would learn how to do it the normal way. That and saving MP for cure is always a good thing. His third move is where he brings back his roaming lasers, as if they weren't annoying enough. This move is tricky to dodge. There are a couple ways you can try to avoid it. One is to run back, jump, and glide, let the first laser miss you, but when you think you're about to get hit with the second one, guard it, and if timed correctly, you should be able to guard the onslaught of dark projectiles from the bigger dark orbs. You will also have to keep in mind that once the dark projectiles are done, he will send the orbs at you, but these are pretty easy to avoid with a simple air slide. The second way is to try and glide around the lasers and guard the dark projectiles in the air, much like how I do here in this clip you are seeing, but it's a bit dangerous seeing as the lasers are pretty much sure to hit you. This fourth move doesn't require much explanation, so I will try to go through this as fast as I can. Anson brings back this roaming lasers, but also sends his shadowy underground thing to try and grab you. You can guard the first laser, jump, and glide away from the claw that's underground, while also avoiding the second laser. He will then summon more dark spikes all around you. All you have to do at this point is air slide when you think they're about to hit. Potion or cure up if you ended up getting hit, and we will proceed to the last possible move he can do. Thank goodness. Now this right here is a callback to his move in Dream Drop Distance, and you pretty much take what you do there and do it here. You just have to dodge roll very carefully. 
Be careful not to just spam it, but to time your dodge rolls as you see on screen. After which, just airstep toward him and he is completely open. You are able to beat Ansem way before you get to this move depending on how much damage you do and what level you are, but once you get past this, it's over. Congratulations, you have beaten Data Ansem. Whew, alright, that was a complete overview of Data Ansem's moveset and how to deal with each of them to the best of what I currently know. I'm not perfect, so I may have missed something myself. By all means, if you guys have any other easier ways to deal with certain aspects of this fight, please do write them down and I'll be sure to give them a favorite. That way people can see them as they look through the comment section just in case my methods didn't work out for them. That was a lot of work, but actually so much fun to make, since this pretty much makes me learn all of the fights myself and engraves them into my memory. If you guys enjoyed, a like on the video would be very much appreciated. As I said in the beginning, if you guys want more of this and are having some trouble on specific fights, let me know which ones you want to see next and I will cover the most requested in each video from now on until we have covered all of them. Oh, and again, if you're looking for something more detailed, or rather step by step, my friend D, my boy, will be doing his series Boss Busters, where he goes into complete detail on each fight with full explanations, so if you still need help after this video, please go check those out. That's all from me though, it's been Limit, and I will hopefully see you guys in the next Data Boss Breakdown. That's a mouthful. Peace out guys.